This is Lloyd Hopkins. This is the Teacher's Lounge. We will now rejoin our conversation with Maria Madrigal. So, so with that being said, um, you know, we, we, so we have a couple things going on in this world that I want to talk to you about. The first one being the pandemic. So um, we shut down. I feel like the whole world changed the week of March 15th. Um, cause I, cause that's in the way I remember that is that's the day that it was after the NBA canceled the rest <laughs> of their season and, and everybody was like, Oh, this is a serious thing. And then I shut down our, I shut down the million dollar teacher project office. Like nobody was allowed back in the office. Everybody worked remotely. Um, and we started taking this thing serious. So it's been March, April, May, June, like four months. Um, and it seems like a lifetime ago. Like it <laughs> seems like this was a was another world. So before we talk about how this is happening in the classroom, how have you been handling the pandemic? What is what is it? What was it like March fifteenth? What was it like for you? What what was and so from Mar take me through March fifteenth to today. What has the pandemic been like? Well, I was at a bar when I found out the NBA was shutting down, everything shutting down. I was like, okay, this is not happening. This, like, nah. And then the next few days, it was like, we got the robocall from district and emails. And I'm like, okay, this is for real. It's like, this is insane. But it was one of those things, like, you still really don't believe it until it was time to supposedly go back to school and they wouldn't let us go back to school. Wow. And immediately my thoughts are like these my students, my children, I'm not going to get to see them. Like, that's mm. it. Like, so I had a few virtual meetings and I let parents know, hey, your child can come, you know, see me virtually if they want to. And I had a few kids join me that way. But not being able to say goodbye to them, not necessarily a goodbye, but, you know, I'll see you later. It's... So you weren't it, able to even, uh, were you able to end the school year? Like, how did, how did, no. you, how did the school year end? A uh, class dojo message saying, thank you, Perry, so much for your time. And just, I wrote them, and I actually wrote them weekly on class dojo, posting videos, activities, um, time frames. They could visit me on the computer if they wanted to, if they had access to it. And just constantly weekly messages. And then once school officially ended end of May, I still randomly, weekly, I post videos and I'll message parents about two weeks ago saying, hey, this is, these are the news so far. If you want to reach out and ask questions, feel free. So I've been on constant, like, hey, if you want to contact me, I know it's summertime, feel free to still contact me. Like, just because I miss them. And that's what I'll tell parents. I'm like, I miss your child. Like, they can call me. I gave them my cell phone number just because you don't know how these students are being at home. Yeah. And I want to provide that support, you know, the best I can, whether it's just hearing my voice voice, or I hear their voice. And it's, it wasn't easy, but I think mentally I knew that if, if and I've actually started meditating as well since mm -hmm. last uh, fall. And I know that has helped me a lot. So I'm like, if I can provide these videos in class dojo and just give parents access to Kind of, not necessarily it's something that's normal, but in like the kids can still view the the videos as well, almost like if they were in class. And just, I don't know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. You, you know, then you're touching on a, a couple things that are really impactful. One <laughs> is so we, 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 we had to shut everything down in March, mm -hmm. but for schools, April is when you do all your testing. Like that's when yes. all the standardized testing happens and all of that stuff. Um, so students are essentially starting this new school year behind, right? Like it's oh yes, like like how so so there's that part, and then there's also the part of um, the mental aspect. Like we've never lived through this. I think the last pandemic like this was a hundred years ago. You know, none yes. of us were around. Um, so the after effects and 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 mentally. We don't know how this is affecting our kids psychologically, how this is affecting us psychologically. That's brilliant that you already started meditating and, and you're trying to include that in your, um, in your everyday life. And now you've been putting on Class Dojo, which for those that don't know, Class Dojo is a communication tool. 
um, yeah. between schools and teachers and parents um, where you can post assignments on there. And if there's things you need teachers to turn in, you can post all that on Class Dojo. Just so any of you listening that don't know what Class Dojo is, you have an idea. Um, so, it, it, but but again, you're you're so there's also that mental aspect, and hopefully the kids are using that yoga and and, and all those type of things. Um, so, how do you feel like schools can best? prepare like how are schools preparing for that with not understanding where kids are coming at mentally not even schools how how are you as a teacher um preparing for that the fact that kids are potentially coming in behind uh because of this disruption to their academics they may be coming in with some um some levels of trauma Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, not every kid especially in the environments that we work in and that you teach in we're talking about title one schools serving low-income communities. Um, there could also be different levels of dysfunction in their homes, different levels of issues in their yeah. homes, um, and, they, and they haven't had an outlet. Sometimes school acts as the outlet for some of that. Um, so how are, how, are you, how, are, how are you or teachers in your community preparing to create a post-pandemic classroom? Or a, not post, because it's not over. So a pandemic classroom. I know it's not going to be easy. And the fact that some parents are still trying to figure out how they're going to get the, like the internet services, because again, just some parents might not have the money or income for it and stuff. I know that as teachers are going to start training and we've been, even the past year, we were starting to implement um, SEL, social emotional learning. And that was part of our curriculum. So I know it's going to continue this year. And I think right now the struggle is how are we gonna get these kids in front of their computer to start engaging with us? Because they haven't seen us. And I, they, I don't even get to say goodbye to my kiddos anymore unless they join me. In, but otherwise I just start fresh. And I think that trust piece is going to be huge. And I think reading different types of books about trauma or their feelings and teaching the students to show them how to express themselves and understand that this is only temporary, which again, children, some of them can't understand that, hey, this is, this is gonna go away. So I think it's gonna be a lot of book reading in the, in the next couple of weeks, a lot of activities of getting to know each other and being able to trust each other before the academic comes because it's, it's going to be hard. They're, they're a few months behind already. And even think of the students that were already behind or a grade or two behind. And so it's, it's going to be rough. And I think the one, number one thing that as teachers we need to remember is like, we can only do what we can. We mm. cannot kill ourselves because at the beginning in, Mar in March, when we found out, I couldn't sleep a few days because I was thinking of my students that I could already picture that were struggling. And it's like, I, I have to take care of me before I can even take care of them. So I think, human. yeah, so it's, it's hard, but I, at the end of the day, I mean, we, we can only do what we can. And so I think as long as the kids know that we love them and we care for them, then they'll come along with us for the ride. And it's just, you know, it, it's a ride. Is your is your school giving you tools? Are they are, are have they have you went through new trainings that you never that you didn't that you did never had to go through before? Like, are you are you being equipped? How what's the preparation looking like? Well, last year we did two trauma um, two trauma uh, trainings in school, and then in May end of April May they provided us some. Um, it was if you wanted to uh, more trauma uh, PDs, and then I know that next year, next year, next week we're already starting our contract. So I know next week they already have some trainings for next week and the following week. So I I haven't looked at the itinerary for what I'm going to be learning yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be based on teaching students some you know emotional how to deal with their emotions. And I know we're also going to be being trained on how to teach virtually because I'm, 
like, I love being in front of a student. How it's, I just, it's, it's not the same talking to a computer. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting, but yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see these kids and start. It's, it's, I think that's another thing that I love about teaching every year. It's different. It's a new set of group. It's a new um, set of um, students. I mean, and what worked one year doesn't work the next year and it might work the following year and you just it's constantly changing so that's another thing that i like about teaching that you know you you can't be afraid it's it's going to be all right <laughs> you'll survive i personally feel like this is a time <laughs> for us to disrupt everything i think yes. that I think this is a time for us to embrace new normals. I think this is a time for us to analyze our old ways of doing things and get rid of the waste or get yes. rid of unproductive things or get rid of the things that aren't as effective as possible. And I think this is a unique moment. Um, and again, I know this stuff is, 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 is high level concepts and, <laughs> and it's not easy to do uh, because so much of our current education system is, is ingrained in, 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 in how curriculum is developed, is in, which is tied to how budgets are developed, which is design, tied to how classrooms are developed. But this is truly an opportunity and a moment where we could redesign the whole thing. What I feel is that the, the first, at least the first semester of the school year should be all social emotional learning. Should be yes. all, there should be, we shouldn't care about grades. <laughs> the first, like, like we got kids living in a pandemic that that like kids that were like we saw kids that were um who weren't able to graduate weren't able to do their high yes. school graduation um we have kids that um, um weren't able to go to their proms and things of that nature we got kids that haven't been able to socialize with each other uh, because of this pandemic uh and then we're going to throw a test in their face and then we're going to say hey you know, let me know how well you know one plus one equals two. I think this is a time for us to redesign um, how we approach the delivery of instruction and add some social emotional learning in there. Maybe we give a kid an A for positively expressing themselves. Maybe now, we, go ahead. I, I would say, I, the, again, now that I've been teaching for so long, I feel like we need to go away from the ABC. D, F. It needs let's to be go, more. Let's the whole thing up right now. It, 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 has up. To, it has to be, are they proficient, approaching, uh, sorry, my brain went blank. I, again, I'm in vacation, but it should be, again, if they're high, oh, highly proficient, proficient, approaching, or failing, because I think that's going to set up parents' understanding of, hey, my child does understand this or they don't, compared to A, B, C, or D, depending on how are the teacher's grade, it could be in A all the time, but then they come to me and they're not, you know, straight A students or whatnot. But that can be a whole different conversation we can have. But I think we need to revamp everything. You're right. I mean, parents, I feel like parents need to, or just society needs to, we are not babysitters. We are truly everything. We're engineers. We're nurses. We're technically You're police. being asked to do things yes. that you weren't trained for. And uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. And I also feel like that's the same thing with policing, right? We have police uh, having to do things or, or take on responsibilities that their position really shouldn't be involved in or they shouldn't be responsible yeah. for. Um, but we throw money at certain things and, 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 we, and we feed the fear instead of the cure, you know, yes. and all that kind of stuff. And the same goes for our teachers, that you are turned into things that, you really shouldn't be and things are put on your plate that you're not always trained to handle. Yes. And to go with your theme about the whole semester should be um, learning emotion and good citizenship and all that, that would help because like you're telling me to, you're telling me to teach this child how to do a fire or a lockdown. Like they're five years old, six years old. I'm like, why are we teaching about, you know, lockdowns that somebody can come kill us. Like Ooh. that is like, that is just wrong. And the idea of putting a gun on a teacher to carry, I'm like, I lose a marker. I lose a pen in my pocket. I'm like, now you want me to carry a gun around a five-year-old, four-year-old? And year -old? expect like, you to manage that well? Yes. Expect a it's kid like, not to get killed? Like. It's, 
we just need to reset. Society needs to reset and really think about what, what do you really want teachers to do? What do you want us to do? Because we can't be at all. Next thing is like, might as well be a boarding school. Let us live with the child all year long. That's really what you're asking us to do. Just, yeah, but yeah we need to revamp everything. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, you know, and um, like one of my board members, he went to boarding school and he's a he's actually a big advocate for boarding schools. He says it changed his life. But there's different environments that work yes. for different people and yes. you have to be trained properly on how to manage that environment and unrealistic expectations are put on our teachers, period. Unrealistic responsibilities are put on our teachers, period. It's almost virtually impossible for you to deliver on the responsibilities that we have put in front of you. And every day you show up and you do your best and you're, and you're trying, but there's, but there's room to innovate. And, there's, and, 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 and I think our current design of education, and I can say this stuff because I'm on the outside trying to support you. <laughs> I got more freedom to everything I say. I don't want you to get all, mm. but we don't gotta go all crazy with it. But I think our current design of education doesn't work well doesn't work well for the masses it, it I think our current design of education isn't serving everybody and I think we and I think there are better models and I think there are better approaches than one teacher in front of 30 kids 30 to 40 I even saw a classroom that had 50 kids in it um, doing your best to accommodate those students but there's no way you're going to be able to to uh, to adjust to all those different learning styles, all those different uh, personalities. Um, it's, it's virtually impossible for you to really reach all of those students and we expect you to, you know? And so yes. we have to do better and we have to, um, if we can't get the classroom size down, we, then we have to do stuff like we do where we're bringing our classroom support team in there to help you better accommodate and reach all those students in your classroom. Uh, but what we even need is funding. So we can do that at a higher capacity and we can ensure every teacher has a classroom support team. So if we're not going to be able to get classroom sizes down because of budgets and, 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 and all of those type of things, then we have to invest in uh, being able to provide teachers with more support and more resources directly inside the classroom. It has to happen. And then also, um, uh, our classroom hasn't been innovated in 100 years. Our classroom has literally been the same. This, this setting that we have that um, was really developed when we were a more industrialized society and people were working in factories and kids were being trained to, for factory work and they got summers off because they had to farm and help family with the farm. I got two kids, not one of these damn kids. <laughs> farm. You know, like, like yes. all they do is all they've been doing is sleeping all summer. So even, even that, like, like we can, we, this, there isn't, our, our, the way that we approach instruction, the way that we approach our classrooms needs to be updated, elevated, uh, innovated, all whatever else I can think of, aided, it needs to be. <laughs> We're excited for you to join us again next week for more with Maria Madrigal. <laughs>